Gaming on Linux is the future. Valve knows it, Nvidia knows it, and all the big players know the market is moving in that direction. But if you want to be an early adopter, or if you're a fan of Linux, there are still a few pain points. There are a few games and pieces of software that are only available on Windows. But VFIO is an awesome stepping stone. If you're running Linux as your main operating system, VFIO is the technology that lets you pass your graphics card into a virtual machine for gaming level performance inside that VM no matter what operating system it's running. In this tutorial series, I'm going to take you from zero to everything you need to know to get started playing your Windows only video games in a virtual machine running on Linux. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve and this is Bland Man Studios, where I make creative stuff and talk about the technology behind it. In this part zero video, I'm going to show you what we're building and we're going to go over the hardware requirements and considerations. In the next few videos, we're going to go over installing Linux, configuring your host operating system, and setting up your first gaming VM. But before we get started with the demo, I want to go over a few disclaimers. The first disclaimer is that these instructions are for dual GPU pass-through. That means that to follow these instructions, you'll need two GPUs. In my case, I have one integrated GPU and one dedicated GPU. So that means that one is a part of the Intel CPU that I bought, and one is a dedicated NVIDIA GPU that I bought separately for gaming. If you don't have one integrated into your CPU, it's possible to do this with two dedicated GPUs. So you can buy an old or inexpensive GPU in addition to the high performance one that you have for gaming. So while single GPU pass-through is possible, the goal of this series is to get started with the most simple and most common configurations. So if you'd like a video on that, let me know in the comments. The second disclaimer is that this video series is going to focus on desktop PCs. GPU pass-through is possible on laptops, but not on every computer and it has some extra considerations. So again, if you'd like a video on that after this series, let me know in the comments. But with that out of the way, let's get to the demonstration. By the end of this tutorial series, you'll have a PC that can do everything I'm about to show you. First, I'm going to turn it on, and it's going to boot to Fedora, which is a common Linux distribution. Right now, the monitor is set to HDMI 1, which is connected to the HDMI output on my computer's motherboard and powered by the integrated GPU. If you choose to use two dedicated GPUs, right now we would be using the output on the inexpensive host GPU. I'm going to log in and you can see Vert Manager has started automatically. I can press the play button to start a VM and you can hear that sound effect because Fedora is set up to put both video and audio out that HDMI port. If my monitor had speakers, we could use them, but it doesn't. So instead, I have a headphone jack for my monitor plugged into this speaker. But now that the gaming VM has started up, I'll switch to the other input on my monitor, HDMI 2. HDMI 2 is plugged into my gaming GPU. And since that GPU is passed into the virtual machine, that's exactly what we're seeing. As you'll see, we also get audio in the VM. Both the guest and host operating systems are configured so their primary audio interface is that HDMI output. So whatever operating system I'm looking at with the monitor, that audio is also coming out of the speakers. I could also use gaming headphones or a USB headset or Bluetooth, but those are customizations for another time in another video. If you'd like to see actual benchmarks or actual gameplay from this exact VM, check out these other videos I've made. With that demo out of the way, we're going to talk about the hardware requirements and considerations when building and setting up a PC for Linux and VFIO. The first consideration is the CPU. We're going to answer two questions. The first is AMD or Intel, and the second is what features does it need to have? As for AMD versus Intel, they both work. Generally with Intel, the cheaper consumer grade chips come with integrated graphics, which saves you from having to buy a second dedicated GPU like I talked about earlier. But if you prefer AMD, you can either spring for a more expensive chip with integrated graphics, or you can buy a second inexpensive dedicated GPU. 
I've seen this one recommended in the community because it's cost effective and powerful enough to drive multiple monitors. The second concern for your CPU choice is that it must support IOMMU. IOMMU stands for Input Output Memory Management Unit, and it is an absolute requirement. You cannot pass your graphics card into a virtual machine without IOMMU. There's actually a Wikipedia page linked in the description with a working list of CPUs and motherboards that support IOMMU. But if your CPU isn't on that list, you can also check with the manufacturer. Intel markets IOMMU support as VT-D, so you just need to go to the product page for your CPU and make sure that it says VT-D is yes. As for an AMD CPU, it's really hard to find info from AMD specifically on which CPUs support IOMMU. I found this archived webpage where they market the feature as AMD-VI, but they don't seem to use that term anymore to describe their recent products. For example, with this CPU, which is known to work with VFIO, it just says virtualization, which isn't helpful because it's possible to support virtualization without supporting IOMMU. But it also links to this page about pure virtualized graphics, which is kind of what we're doing here. But it would be really nice if AMD would just add a checkbox or line item specifically for IOMMU. If you're buying a PC with an AMD CPU, you might want to check the VFIO subreddit, the pass-through post, or some of these lists to see if you can find someone with a working VFIO setup using your CPU. Or maybe you just want to buy one from a vendor with a good return policy. If you're in that boat, or you already have a CPU, and you can't find information online if IOMMU is supported, your best option is probably just to proceed with this tutorial Install Linux, enable IOMMU, and then check to see that it was successfully enabled. But don't worry, we'll cover all that in a later video. The last piece of advice I have is about CPU cores. If you're comparing two CPUs and all things are equal, get the one with the higher core count. Typically, with a VFIO setup, we leave one core for the host operating system. That means that your gaming VM is operating with one less core than another PC would with the exact same build. Usually games don't make use of that many cores, but if you're in a situation where you're running a piece of software that takes advantage of a high core count, you might be thankful to have a few extra. This isn't a huge deal, I've been running an 8 core CPU for the last 2 years and haven't had a problem. The next important piece of hardware we're going to talk about is the motherboard. Unfortunately, this one's tough to verify too, so you're either going to need to rely on the community or just test it out yourself. With the motherboard, we're looking for three things. The first two are that both the chipset and the BIOS support IOMMU. And the third thing is what we call good IOMMU group isolation. For me, I bought the Asus Tough Z390M Pro motherboard. I picked the Z390 chipset because it was recommended by the Pass Through Post's VFIO Increments page, so I knew it supported IOMMU. And I picked this specific motherboard because it was available at Micro Center and they have a really good return policy. So if you're building a PC, you can check out these lists to see if your motherboard supports IOMMU, and you can check out these lists to see what the IOMMU groups are. But I think it's important that we talk about what good IOMMU group isolation means. Earlier, I mentioned that IOMMU is absolutely necessary for passing your graphics card into a virtual machine. That's because IOMMU can isolate specific regions of memory and give their control to a specific program. In this case, we're isolating the GPU memory and giving control to the virtual machine. The challenge is that if your motherboard connects everything to one IOMMU group, it's difficult to pass in one device, but not the others. So ideally, you'd want one IOMMU group for each PCI slot. So on my build, I have one PCI slot for my graphics card, one for a PCI USB card, and additional slots for my M.2 drives. This gives me excellent control because I can pass in just the graphics card, or I can pass in the PCI USB card and an M.2 drive as well. As I mentioned, motherboard manufacturers aren't great at publishing the IOMMU group layout, so your best bet is to look at community posts or to just try it out yourself. Okay, with that out of the way, we're ready to talk about the most exciting piece of hardware, the gaming GPU. 
We're also going to call this the guest GPU because we're passing it into the guest operating system, which is the virtual machine. And in case it wasn't clear, by passing it in, I mean we're giving the virtual machine total control of the gaming GPU and the host operating system won't have access to it while the VM is on. There are two typical routes for a dedicated guest GPU, NVIDIA and AMD. Since March of 2021, NVIDIA has stopped trying to block people from using their graphics cards in a virtual machine. They announced beta support for VFIO in all GeForce and Titan GPUs. So for now, any NVIDIA GPU will work, and if they decide to roll back this decision, the workarounds are simple enough. As for AMD cards, I don't have experience with these, but the summary is that some work and some just plain don't. A lot of them do work, but the trouble comes in when add-in board partners introduce modifications to the GPU BIOS that make pass-through not work as intended. This is known in the community as the AMD reset bug. The problems aren't typically prohibitive, but some can be really annoying. For example, in some cases you have to reboot the host operating system anytime you want to reboot your virtual machine. So my advice would be that if you have an AMD card or you're buying an AMD card, do a little research on the AMD reset bug. Maybe it's been patched by now, or maybe you'll find someone has posted it online that they have the same manufacturer's version of the same GPU and they have a working VFIO setup. I'll include a few places you can check in the description. If you already have a PC and you want to follow along with these tutorials, the last thing you'll need is a blank USB drive. We'll be using this to install Linux, which will actually be the topic of our next video, so you can follow along from scratch. If you're building a PC specifically for VFIO, I have a few more recommendations and considerations. The first one is RAM. You might want to buy a little more RAM than you would otherwise need because you're going to be running two operating systems at once. The recommendation is typically to start by allocating half your system's RAM to the virtual machine and seeing how well things work. If you're not doing much on the host operating system, you can start allocating more RAM to the VM. If my system serves as a reference, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM and I've been allocating 16 gigabytes to the virtual machine and it's always been plenty for me. I have similar advice when it comes to storage, which is your computer's drives. Whether you choose hard disk drives or solid state drives, it's about what's best for your budget. The real place where VFIO requirements come in, again, is you might want to buy a little more than you would otherwise need because you're going to be installing two operating systems. Also something to consider is, if at some point in the future you'll want to squeeze out every last bit of performance out of your gaming VM, you'll want to consider buying an extra M.2 drive specifically for passing into your VM. I made this video going over the performance benefits of this advanced setup. So while it's out of the scope of this tutorial, we can go over that in a later video and you might want to plan ahead for it with your build. Okay, the last recommendation I have for a VFIO build is a PCI USB card. There are some USB devices like headsets that have both audio in and audio output that have issues when assigning them to a VM. So it can be helpful to have a PCI USB card that you pass into the virtual machine and that way you have dedicated USB ports that you know are going to be assigned to the VM and won't have any issue. To cover the other common components, whether it's a cooler, power supply, peripherals, or case, none of these have a big effect on VFIO, so it's just about what's best for your budget and your priorities. Okay, with all that out of the way, I hope this wasn't too scary or too big of a turnoff to talk about all of the complicated considerations. In my opinion, if you decide to go through with this, it's a lot of fun to take control of your computer and your operating systems. And while sometimes it can be a pain to troubleshoot, it can also be a great learning opportunity. Okay, so if after watching this video you're excited to try this out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you're notified when the next video comes out. Also, check the description because maybe that video is already out. And in case there are any corrections I need to make to this video, I'll make sure they're included below. If you're new to the world of Linux or PC building, definitely let me know in the comments. I really enjoy getting to help people out, and I'd love the opportunity to make these videos even better. But if you'd rather wait for some of these technologies to be more mainstream, with more vendor support and documentation, or if you're waiting for Linux to be the market leader for gaming and real-time graphics, I'm sure we'll be there soon. Thanks for watching, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video, and don't forget to stay bland.